And this week there was a big announcement on the 2024 presidential race. Former South Carolina governor and United Nations ambassador Nikki Haley announced that she'll be running for president of the United States. Now she's the first major rival to challenge former President Donald Trump for the Republican Party nomination. And joining us now to talk more about it is Julia Manchester, our national political reporter with The Hill. Great to see you in person. Thank you so much yes, for being great to here. See you as well. And was this a surprise announcement? Talk to us about why Nikki Haley made the announcement now in mid-February. You know, it wasn't a surprise announcement. We knew that she was probably going to get in around mid-February. But what's so interesting is she is the first Republican to really get out and challenge Donald Trump, who announced in November. So he's been in the race for a while. Hasn't really been doing a lot of in-person campaigning. So with Nikki Haley, announcing her uh, campaign launch in South Carolina. She's essentially sort of kicked off the campaign trail of 2024. She's been in New Hampshire. She's going to Iowa next week. South Carolina, her home state, obviously a big early state for the Republican primary. So she very much has made news and getting in ahead of the rest of the Republican field. We don't really know whether that's going to pressure other potential Republican candidates to get in. We know that um, other potential candidates like Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina has also been going to Iowa and New Hampshire. So we'll have to see if we have some more announcements coming in the next few months. So if she is successful, she'd be the first woman and first Asian American to be nominated by the Republican Party, but she really doesn't have big name recognition. That's a fact. How is that going to be a challenge for her as she is doing all these primaries? You're absolutely right. She doesn't have the same national name recognition that Donald Trump has because as a former president, obviously that works for Donald Trump. She is very popular, obviously, in South Carolina, but the voters of Iowa or New Hampshire and other states don't necessarily know her the way that those of us in the media do or even um, those of us in political circles. So she has a lot to do in terms of working to build that name recognition with voters. She's definitely getting out ahead of that by doing that retail politicking that you see so often in Iowa and New Hampshire. And, you know, to be fair, she's not the only candidate with this issue. You know, even though Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor, in most hypothetical polling is leading her and does have quite a bit of support, he doesn't have as much name recognition as you would think nationally because he is a Florida known entity. So like she's a South Carolina known entity, like Governor Glenn Youngkin, another potential Republican contender is a Virginia known entity. A lot of these people need to get out of that political bubble that they're used to and go and get on the ground in Iowa, New Hampshire and South Carolina. And what's so interesting about this, she's going up against her former boss. Now she left the Trump administration on relatively yeah. good terms. That all changed this week because former President Trump is already attacking him on her stances on Medicare and Social Security. How are we going to see this matchup play out? You know, I think it depends how Haley does in the polls. If she starts to gain momentum, gain traction, rise in the polls, I think you are going to see more attacks from Donald Trump and Donald Trump supporters. If she continues to poll in the single digits and maybe some other contenders continue to poll ahead of her, like DeSantis, I think you're going to see Trump continue to focus on DeSantis. But what I think is interesting is I was talking to a Republican source this week and he essentially said, look, um, some other Republican contenders like Pence, like Mike Pompeo, um, Youngkin, Asa Hutchinson, the former governor of Arkansas, all these potential contenders may be sort of waiting it out a little bit to see how the Trump-Haley dynamic plays out. Maybe wait until um, you know, see how Haley's able to handle attacks from Trump if he does decide to attack her. So she's done a really good job of walking that fine line of criticizing Donald Trump, but at the same time, not completely alienating him. But now she's challenging him head on. And I think she needs to be, and I think she realizes she's gonna have to be open to those attacks and ready to respond. And last 45 seconds, we know that campaigning is going to rely a lot on money and fundraising. How do Republican donors view Nikki Haley? You know, look, I think she's viewed very positively among Republican donors. However, the question is, you know, how are they viewing her? Are they viewing her as someone who can potentially poll well against a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis? She, can she hold her own? Unfortunately, I think there is a perception amongst, you know, many in political circles or even media circles that, um, you know, Nikki Haley automatically, you think of her as a vice president. A lot of that unfortunately, I think might have to do with her gender. However, um, I think there's also a recognition that on paper, she's probably one of the more qualified candidates in this. She has legislative experience, she has gubernatorial experience, and she has foreign policy experience. So they're going to be weighing those, and I think they're going to be watching to see how she polls and how she reacts to those attacks from Trump, which we know are coming. All right, Julia Manchester from The Hill, thank you so thank much you. for being here for you.